Good morning, folks. Uh, July the 11th, 2016. Kent Hovind here in Traverse City, Michigan. Going home tomorrow night, get in about midnight, and then somebody's going to pick me up and drive up to Lenox, Alabama to finish working on the camp. What a blessing that's been. Today is the day, the 10-year anniversary today, of the U.S. attorney getting the judge or magistrate to sign an indictment against me that ended up putting me in prison. Uh, the different folks that are researching on this indictment have found unbelievable errors and problems, so be praying about that. I can't believe all the laws they broke to put me in prison, but hey, that's God's problem. Uh, anyway, so it was 10 years ago today, the anniversary of the indictment, and then the arrest was July 13th, two days from now. So what a what a situation that was. You can read all about that on freekenthoven.com, and you need to watch the videos um uh, from freekenthoven.com, the documentary. Wow, there's some good stuff on there. Uh, correct, as far as I've seen in there, that what happened to me beyond uh, beyond belief. Anyway, <clears throat> God's been good. I've been out of prison for a year and three days now. And if you want to help us get uh, rebuilding on Dinosaur Adventure Land, come help us. People send questions, and I'm sorry, I'm three months behind. I'm going to try to get a bunch done while I'm here today. i uh, got to see a, uh, one of the world-class chiropractors try to fix my neck and back I've had trouble with for, what, 40 years now since that car accident. 47 years. Got hit me from behind. I was in my little Toyota, perfectly still, stopped, talking out the window. It got hit me from behind, going 50 mile an hour, 55, we're not sure, but uh, in a big Grand Am back at the old uh, 68 or something, or nine, what, Grand Am. Knocked my car 100 yards with me in it, <clears throat> pushed the back bumper clear up to the driver's door. We bought the car back off the junkyard after it got wrecked because the motor was still good. Anyway, and boy, I've had trouble ever since with my back. So be praying they can fix that. That'll be today and tomorrow. I'm going to get two appointments in, <clears throat> try to straighten me out. Um, Okay, so I'm going to take a few questions here. What are their housekeeping stuff? If you want to help at Dennis Adventureland, come on down, uh, 488 Pearl Lane, Lenox, Alabama. The mailing address is Repton, Alabama, but the physical address is Lenox. It's a couple miles off Interstate 65, straight north of Pensacola, 70 miles. <clears throat> we could use a lot of help, or if you want to just help pay for the stuff. If you say, I can't come, but here, I'll, I'll buy some sheetrock or plywood. Send the money to Ernie or go to drdino.com or 2peter3.com. I'm not sure. Anyway, there's a donate here button if you want to help. Uh, we're going to use that place to try to win a bunch of folks to the Lord. Right outside this motorhome I'm staying in, uh, can't, mo yeah, mobile motorhome, um, there's a bunch of black squirrels uh, up here. Uh, pretty cool. Big black squirrels trying to get in this crazy bird feeder. <laughs> a bunch of yellow finches. Gorgeous up here in the woods of, uh, where am I at? Traverse City, Michigan. Okay, uh, questions here. This one sent in March 23rd. Sorry, I'm what, three and a half months behind. I'm trying. From uh, Sergi. <clears throat> Dr. Orphan, thanks for your channel. It gives my family something useful to watch. My sister was at Tacoma, uh, Washington, and took a picture with you. It's not every day you get to see a celebrity. Well, I don't think I'm a celebrity, but okay. Um, my question is, did we go to the moon? <clears throat> Sergi, I've answered this a few times before on my YouTube, and yes, I, do, I believe we did go to the moon. I think there's no question the government would lie to us. That's never been an issue. But yeah, I think that was really legitimate. We did go to the moon. <clears throat> I don't know that all the pictures were legitimately from the moon, but I think we did go. Okay, what are your thoughts uh, about not being able to cross the Van Allen belts? Yeah, I'm familiar with that. I taught earth science for years. I don't think uh, that I think they allowed for all that with the radiation, etc., with the shielding and stuff on the on the spacecraft and. Uh, I, I will take I take the position they did go to the moon. Okay, thanks for your question. Let's see. Uh, oh, how did I get off? It moved. Ah, oh, there we go. Mary writes in. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I take these questions uh, live. I don't read them ahead of time. Probably should, but I don't have time. Uh, Kent, I watched your videos and admire what you do, uh, but your views on the flat earth have me doubtful of you. Is it because you already went to jail and don't want to be persecuted? The proof is all there. Mary, I'm Uh, I just, I've answered this dozens of times. I'm sorry. The earth is round, and it's not because I'm afraid of going to jail. I'm not afraid of those people. They can put me back if they want. <coughs> they probably want to. Uh, <coughs> sorry. No, the earth is a round ball. It's tilted over 23 and a half degrees. It spins on its axis, and it goes around the sun. The heliocentric view is all correct. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Mythical bubble. Uh, phone already here. It's only 6.30 in the morning. Um, Mr. Robin, I love watching your videos. I'm so happy that someone is doing a great job teaching people. I'm thankful for your seminars. They helped my dad realize that God is real and true. Well, thank you. It is amazing all the letters and phone calls we get from people watching those crazy videos or DVDs and get, get, get saved. Life change. It's not because it's me, but it is life changing information. I wish I had had it sooner, <coughs> 20 years earlier in my life. Here we go. It's just God's word that's glorified. That's all. Drew, D R E W. <coughs> I apologize. <laughs> Quick message, Dr. Oven. I've heard several times on YouTube channel he mentioned an analogy of uh, flat shakes in a flat land as described to him by a friend. He describes it as though he doesn't realize that it was not just a story from his friend, it's an actual book titled Flatland. It's a very short read, has incredible insight into the reality. Beyond Our Belief. I haven't heard of that book, uh, Flatland. They tell the story about trying to under, for a human to try to understand God <clears throat> is like a two-dimensional person who only has length and width, which of course couldn't really happen, but to, trying to understand depth or height, the, the third dimension. They just they can't get it. So that's an illustration I use. Thank you. I have to look for that book, Flatland. Okay, here we go. Harley. Uh, boy, there are Harleys all over up here in northern Michigan this time of year. I can't believe it. It's like Harley heaven. They come up here by the thousands. Uh, <clears throat> don't come in the wintertime, though. Um, you've been contacted by Harley. Hi, Kent. Could you please explain 1 John 5, 16 and 17? Thank you. Harley, I don't have my Bible handy. It's over there. <clears throat> I take the questions um, cold turkey, so send it next time. Uh, and then I'll uh, get... Send the, send the verse also. I don't happen to know that one by heart. Jonah writes in. Um, I can't hope you got the email right. Hope I got the email right. I want to know your thoughts about sacrifices in the Old Testament. What are your thoughts on those verses? Let the woman keep silence in all subjection. Learn in silence. This is uh, from Timothy 2.11. Uh, I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Uh, I don't know if that's First or Second Timothy. You didn't mark it here, 2.11. That's what Paul told Timothy to do in those days. Now, whether that's right or not or true or not for today, uh, probably, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> as far as sacrifices in the Old Testament, from the very beginning, you know, Adam and Eve sinned, and they made themselves uh, aprons of fig leaves. God made them coats of skins. Two differences there. God's idea of modesty is different than theirs. Their idea was an apron, and God says, oh, no, you need a coat. So modesty is defined very early in the Bible. Uh, but um, And then you need to have a sacrifice. Something has to die. God is trying to teach them the importance of uh, a proper payment for sin. If somebody steals your car and wrecks it and says, hey, I'm sorry, here's five bucks. No, 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 no. That's not a sacrifice that, that satisfies. And if you've offended an almighty, perfect God, you need a, co a complete sacrifice uh, to, to satisfy that God. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sinneth it shall die. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. The Bible's clear on this topic. And so God said, no, Adam, something has to die. And then next, Cain and Abel. You know, the situation there, they brought God an uh, offering. Cain brought his fruit. Hey, God, look what I did for you. And God wouldn't take it. Abel brought a sacrifice. God said, I'll take it. All through the Bible, God is trying to teach the hard-headed people, look, you don't understand how serious your sin is or what it's going to take to pay for that. Finally, Jesus Christ himself, God in the flesh, came down to become a man, and he became the ultimate sacrifice. And on the cross, the last thing he said was, it's finished. And by the way, it was finished. He didn't go to hell and burn for three days. It was finished right there on the cross. Uh, he did go down to paradise and lead those people out. That's another long, interesting story. Okay, as far as the women learning in silence, churches argue about that and fight over that. Different churches have different doctrines and I've learned women are just as smart as men in, in every case, uh, emotionally wired differently. And the man should be the leader of the church, First Timothy 3, there's no question about that, and the leader of the house. See, that's part of the curse God put on the woman. He said, Eve, because you sin, Adam's the boss. Oh, no. Yeah, and it is, oh, no, in, in some cases. But that's the, you have to have a leader. I mean, the military knows that. You get four guys lost out in the woods, they appoint themselves a squad leader. Okay, George, you're in charge. Tell us what to do. And you take responsibility if it goes bad. It's standard, you know, uh, 101 uh, leadership. You have to have somebody calling the shots. You have to have one person driving the car. 
Don't get two people on the steering wheel. Gee whiz, that'll never go anywhere. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Some verses in Deuteronomy about uh, cut off her hand, Deuteronomy uh, 25. Those are, of course, all the law, and those are all for the Jews, and uh, those are all not done away with, but fulfilled in Christ. So I don't know that I'd uh, get too carried away with worried about the Deuteronomy laws for today. <clears throat> Here we go, Sindri, S-I-N-D-R-E. Now there's a big blue J. Sindri writes in, happy to hear Fine Ken out of prison today. Listen to the YouTube channel now. I just downloaded the official creation seminar. I also bought the series, series on DVD about 10 years ago. Then it was seven DVDs. It's nice to share files with my friends. Uh, well, I love to see that. I like to see the Norwegian subtitles from Sindri. Well, thank you, Sindri. Appreciate that. We just had a couple of Norwegians baptized at Dinosaur Adventureland uh, last week. If you want to come down, come help us. Uh, they were great workers there and did a great job helping us out there. Pray that they grow in the Lord. Uh, one got saved watching my videos in Norway and came over to America. And then uh, uh, Morton, uh, I led to the Lord sitting at dinner and baptized him a couple days later. Praise God. Okay, let's see. Uh, read. My first is many of many is in regards to the Book of Moron, <laughs> the witnesses and the actual theft of it. Where can I find proof and other thoughts to raise the seed of doubt with the young missionaries buzzing through the neighborhood? Read the, the experts on the Mormon religion, to my knowledge. I don't know of anybody better. Are the Tanners, T-A-N-N-E-R, in Salt Lake City. Their uh, website is U-T-L-M, Utah Lighthouse Mission, U-T-L-M dot org, I think. They have some great stuff on the history of Mormonism what they believe, the crazy, crazy things they believe. Uh, it is really, really bizarre. Uh, <clears throat> so go to them if you would. Tom writes in, uh, I just found out not more than 10 minutes ago that you were released from prison in July of 2015. I'm right, as I write this, I'm weeping terribly. I have prayed so much for your release. It's almost comical to think that you were roaming, f while you were roaming free, I was still praying for your release. I discovered your YouTube channel. I'll be busy for the next few weeks. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. You've been out for a year and a uh, year and three days. Yay. Uh, beats every prison they put me in. Ma, from This one from Ukraine. I can't pronounce the name. M-A-L-E-S-H. Malesh. I'm a great fan of yours. Therefore, I'd be very happy if you could send me an autographed picture of you. Uh, Malane. You know, several people have asked for that. Not too many. It's not like I'm a movie star. But if you contact Rhonda at the office, 855-BIG-DINO. And by the way, the office is moved to Lenox, Alabama. It's not organized, but it's moved, okay? And I don't know if she's got it all straight yet, but she's working hard on it. Go to secretary at 2peter3.com. That's the uh, email. And say you'd like an autographed picture. I think she has uh, some or can get some. Say, hey, Brother Hovind would like you to get a stack of his pictures, and I'll sit and sign it whenever I get time. And you can get an autographed picture, if that means anything. Be glad to do that to you for you. Okay, Brand Braden. No, nope. Catherine. And I gotta quit. I've thought about writing you for some time. Several years ago I came across your DVD series on creation dinosaurs through Netflix. I was completely blown away by the information after some time and consideration I realized the Bible was actually literally true. Absolutely. The Bible is completely correct as written. God made the world in six days. We're all going to die and we're all going to face that same God and we're all going to be judged. And if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to hell forever. That's what it says. And I don't want that for anybody. So we do a lot of work trying to prevent that. Let's see. I want to thank you for being faithful, knowing God, following God's call and producing these videos. God used your ministry to change my life. I know you've had a large impact on many people. I just want you to know how it impacted mine. Well, thank you, Catherine. I appreciate that. Please spread it around. That's all I ever ask. Go tell somebody else about it. But speaking of which, if you want to get our seminar series, Theodore has a special running. It might run out today. I don't know if to Theodore. Two sets of the seminar for 50 bucks. I mean, 18 hours of teaching on creation evolution versus evolution, plus one of the debates I did against a three atheists at once, three evolutionists at once. And it's all the whole package. Normally 50 bucks for a package, and uh, even then it wished to be $100 for the package. But uh, there's a lot of good information in there, I think. My humble, humble, totally unbiased opinion. Two of them for 50 bucks, and you can give them out as Christmas presents, birthday presents. Stock up early and uh, get a bunch of them. Pass them out to your friends. They really are life-changing, and it's not because it's me. It's because it's God's work. Thank you for joining us, folks. Got to go. 
Uh, talk to you later next time. Bye.